Gisela here with the Trek Boss Show, and today we have a special guest. We have Jesse James Dupree. Thank you very much. Good to see you. You got a new song out. I, I grew up uh, loving, you know, traditional country music. You know, my dad used to play the Waylon Jennings and Johnny Cash and just all the greats, and so I grew up, uh, you know, loving that kind of music as well as rock. And uh, I've been stretching out over the last year with a side band called uh, Jesse James Dupree and Dixie Inc. And uh, we actually just went out and about a month or so ago, went out and did a couple of weeks worth of dates as Dixie Inc. And uh, just had a great time and a great run. I've got an album in the can of, uh, of music that I've recorded with the Dixie Inc. guys and um, ready to get it out as soon as I can. But right now with uh, everything that's going on with the supply chain uh, needing uh, to stay strong and, and the truck drivers pulling their weight and more than their weight, making it happen literally. Um, we have uh, stopped for a minute. We wrote a song called It Didn't Fall From The Sky. And uh, it's it's something I'm very proud of and uh, recorded it. And we just uh, just now just releasing it. And you guys are going to be one of the first to get your hands on it and play it for everybody. Did you write the song alone or were there others that collaborated with you on the song as well? I was practicing social distancing and uh, wrote it all by myself. <laughs> oh, but, I, but I did slide the guys in uh, one at a time and six foot apart and we laid it down. So tell me what goes into um, writing and producing a song. Well, it depends. I mean, sometimes it can uh, it can be quite a, a process and, and take quite a while, but uh, sometimes it just falls together. This this song, uh, the tribute to the American trucker that, that we wrote, it's called Didn't Fall From The Sky. It just happened to fall together really quickly. And not only did the songwriting fall together really quickly, but uh, everybody that, that participated in the recording, Joey Huffman and, and Roman Glick and my son Nigel on drums and Roman was on bass and Don Wayne Reno, um, uh, on uh, banjo, just the legendary Don Wayne Reno, and and um, and uh, uh, Kenny Kilgore on the guitar, just did an amazing job. Everybody came in and just uh, just went straight to the right parts. I mean, it was took very little producing. I mean, everybody just seemed to fill the right part for the songs. With of course this COVID nineteen outbreak that's going on right now, and it's affected your band. Um, obviously not being able to go on tour and promote and all that, but in how and what other ways has it affected you guys? As far as, you know, everybody in the band feels it, you know, financially, the road crew feels it financially. Uh, you know, that's a big stress on us is, is, uh, is, you know, having people that are dependent on us and it goes on out to the, to the, to the concert venues and the people that work there and the loaders that get the equipment in and, and all of our radio partners that we have, uh, radio stations if you know, have felt this just like everyone else. Um, you know, it's, it, 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 it's a trickle down effect and, uh, and it weighs on you. And again, uh, the sooner we can get past this, the better, uh, you know, it's a very serious virus. Uh, at the same time, you know, everybody's ready to, to, to draw lines and argue with each other about whether or not we've overreached or overstepped with, you know, uh, with with the methods that we're taking and um it only here's only history will tell only history will tell if we've handled it in the right ways or the wrong ways and what we could have done better and so on and so forth what is something that you know your fans can look forward to once you're able to get out on the road we're hoping that sturges doesn't get affected uh, and we're hoping that, uh, you know, uh, a lot of our fans, whether they ride a motorcycle or not, they meet us up in Sturgis, South Dakota. This is the 80th anniversary of the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally and uh, was on the path to be the biggest, you know, well over a million people this year making the pilgrimage up to the Black Hills, which is a, probably the most beautiful part of this country or one of the most beautiful parts of this country. And um Hopefully our fans can look forward to salvaging Sturges and uh, celebrating not only the 80th anniversary, but celebrating America's resilience. Sturges usually takes place when? I know it's a big thing and a lot of people talk about it. Yeah, Sturges, South Dakota, the, the, the Sturges Motorcycle Rally happens the first uh, the first very full week of, of August. It'll start right there around uh, the way the months fell this year. They scooted it back from, from uh, when it normally is, which is like right there on the first week, but the first very full week is whenever it is. Now, with your new song, when is it um, going to launch? And are you gonna have a designated place to where someone, you know, if they're interested in the song, they can go and download it? Well, we went ahead and uh, we went ahead and kind of snuck it out on YouTube with a video that, that we're proud of, but uh, the actual release is coming up the first week of May. So we're, we're about eight, nine days away from the from it being released to all the Spotify's and Apple and 
and iTunes and you know all the, the the obvious places to go to. So be be tuned in and dialed ready for that. But right now you can get a sneak preview of it on the, on the YouTube under the Jesse James Dupree channel. I like that. A sneak peek. Of course, um, you know, here at the Trick Boss Show, we're a big fan of Jackal and yourself, and you guys rock out. We, You guys blew, blew us away with everything, so I can tell you that um, we do look forward to, um, you know, the launching of your song, and, you know, hopefully that we get to see you guys in concert, you know, with this new band over here, and, and check you guys out so we can rock out with you guys as well. I love making new friends, and the Truck Ball Show has been been a great friend of us uh, this over this course of the last year. I uh, uh, was fortunate enough to meet Landon out at uh, covering one of the uh, slow rolls that was going on around Indianapolis protesting the uh, uh, electronic logs. And, um, you know, I, I was in the middle of shooting a documentary uh, speaking out against the electronic logs. Um, I, I, if a truck driver wants to use the electronic logs or obviously if their company implements them and, and, it, and it, to whatever extent it can be a safety mechanism and an efficiency mechanism then that's great but um, you know at the point that it starts infringing on uh, the independent truck drivers being able to uh, uh, you know uh, apply their common sense to their craft and their trade what they do which is what the electronic log is kind of taking out of the equation and I think that you know that that's a bit of an overstep because I think even the even the company trucks would uh, would need to be able to depend on the truck drivers having some common sense of when and what to do when they're out there pulling an eighty thousand pound plus load. So um, you know I'm not a fan of the of the electronic logs unless uh, unless it's 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 some something that the drivers and the, and the owners are wanting to use. I, I just don't like the overreach of the government mandating them. Uh, not that um, you know that I own a truck today, but I have owned a couple of tractor trailers in the past, and I've got a lot of great relationships in the truck uh, in the trucking community. And uh, more than anything, I just see the effect that it's having. You know, the electronic logs and other overreaches by the federal government. I see the effect that it's having on uh, the uh, the ecosystem of the truck drivers. Uh, you know, truck driving is something that generally has been passed down through generations. You know, kids grew up wanting to be like their dad and drive a truck. And now I've seen situations where, you know, fathers are telling their sons or their daughters, yeah, you don't want to do this uh, just because, you know, in, their freedoms are being infringed upon. And, uh, it, you know, uh, with, whether it be big business creeping in on things or the government, either one, I hate to see the uh, lifestyle of the American trucker being uh, tampered with because, again, I think it's a very viable part of our uh, of our ecosystem as a country, uh, just like whenever the farmers found themselves uh, with a bee shortage and they were having to truck bees in to pollinate, you know, big crops and stuff. Uh, you know, you don't want to mess with that ecosystem and the truck drivers are, are one of those ecosystems that, that I just don't think the goobers in Washington, D.C. quite understand enough to be able to implement uh, the, 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 the laws and restrictions that they're doing. I think that um, it's worth the guys in Washington, D.C. taking a pause and stepping back and realizing that they don't know enough about the, the truck drivers and, and their world to be able to, you know, to do that. And, and I think it's an overreach and, and again, not a fan of the ELDs. Um, I feel you on that, Jesse. Well, Jesse, we look forward to your song. Thank you so much for being here on the Truck Ball Show, and we cannot wait to see you guys again. Celebrating 100,000 followers, the Truck Ball Show. Proud of you and proud to be part of the family. And uh, check out uh, it's Jesse James Dupree and Dixie Inc., and the song is called It Didn't Fall From The Sky. All right, right Jesse. Truck Balls, pow! <laughs> Thanks so much, Jesse. Talk to you later.